Hello and welcome to Matt's Book Corner. Um, I haven't said that for about three years or something stupid like that. <laughs> um, it's hot as hell at the minute in Scotland and I'm sure some of you down south are getting even higher temperatures than this. I think it's going to be like 39 degrees or something stupid. But anyway, I figured I'd do a bit of a compilation because I want to do some more book videos. I'm, I'm actually reading The Demonologist, which is the real life cases of Ed and Lorraine Warren. That's them on the back there. Who are obviously the uh, title characters in the Conjuring Universe movies. Um, so far so good, very interesting book. Whether or not you believe in that sort of thing, it's an interesting read either way. So I might bring that to you. If you want to see that, drop me a comment below, give this like on a video, I'll say that again, like this video and uh, I'll do that. And don't worry, new content is coming very soon so I hope you enjoy, drop me a like, comment below what your favourite segment was and I'll see you next time. Hello and welcome back to Matt's Book Corner where I look at books in a corner again. So this week is a nice change of pace I'm going to be looking at the amazing Stephen King's Joyland, oh yes. But I'm also going to be talking about the audiobook version because uh, as much as I love a good book, I love an audiobook just as much. Here's the plot. College student Devin Jones takes a summer job at Joyland, an old timey circus slash theme park on the coast. It's supposed to be a summer adventure before the start of the new term, but evil dogs him at every step. The park has a dark history. A murder in the spook house that's gone unsolved for years draws Devin in. As if that's not bad enough, the ghost of Linda Gray, the victim of this killer, is supposedly haunting the spook house. Some see her, some don't, but she's always there. Will Devin get to the bottom of the unsolved murder and escape Joyland unscathed? Even better, will the killer of Linda Gray let him reveal his secret? <laughs> That'd be telling. Now firstly, I want to say what's remarkable about this uh, novella is it's probably Stephen King's shortest work, clocking in at only 238 pages. This is from the man who's been quoted as having diarrhea of the pen. <laughs> An apt quote, as much as I love Stephen King's writing, he sometimes does waffle on a little bit like I'm doing now. But as the saying goes, the novel is short and sweet and packs a massive emotional punch. Honestly, I love this book and I've read it uh, twice now and I really want to read it again. Now, Joyland is an extremely grounded drama about life when you're 21 and trying to uh, stand on your own two feet and get a job and everything. <laughs> Something I'm still struggling with with this whole thing. King paints the everyday in immaculate detail, leaving no question that these events and places are entirely real. And saying that, it's this sense of place that really connected me to the novel and uh, helps you along as the more fantastical elements come in. You completely believe everything that's happening and uh, I absolutely love that. Now this is a different kind of King story, albeit with uh, the usual supernatural elements thrown in. <laughs> Did I not mention that Linda Gray haunts the spook house? Now I've got to say, I read this novel like a man dying of thirst, one long big gulp. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, it was that good. So having loved the novel so much, imagine my surprise when I managed to find Joyland, the audiobook, sat here on YouTube. And don't worry folks, because I put the links all in my YouTube description, so if you want to have a listen, check out the description box while they're there, because YouTube is notorious for taking things like this down. I suppose, fair enough, copyright, copyright, but uh, go check them out while they're there. Now I've listened to a hell of a lot of audiobooks and audio dramas and I love to pop them on when I'm on a long car journey or when I take the dogs out for an hour or so into the woods. Some of the King books are actually read by Stephen King himself which is even better. In fact I just listened to 1408 the other day that was read by him. Link here. Or is it here? No, no, it's here. <laughs> Thankfully the reading of Joyland which comes in four parts is read to perfection. I'm not sure of the voiceover artist's name, I'll pop it here if I do remember. And as he's reading every single character and putting on slightly different voices to convey those, he really emotes well to the characters and uh, I enjoyed his performance. So overall I've got to say Joyland is a must read because it's an amazing mystery book, it works as a love story, it works as a supernatural story as well. It just works on so many levels. If you haven't read this, go listen to the audiobooks while you're doing something else and you'll fall in love with it as much as I am. <laughs> I'm going to give this book a solid 5 out of 5 and I'll also give the audio version a 5 out of 5. Check them out if you think I'm wrong and please let me know what you thought of the novel and the audio version in the comments below because I love to hear from you. <laughs> So this week I'm looking at a book by the prolific author Joel Lansdale. The book's called By Bizarre Hands and it comprises 16 short stories that all have very strange subject matter. Kind of like Ray Bradbury meets Clive Barker. 
which is pretty damn weird in my book. <laughs> Personally, I couldn't pass picking this book up because uh, I'm a big fan of Bubba Hotep. I've never read the book, but I've seen the movie with Bruce Campbell playing a very aging Elvis Presley with uh, a mummy after him. <laughs> and if you've never even heard of that, go Google it right now. <laughs> I'll just be sat here waiting for you. Take your time. <laughs> Back to the book though, this is a very odd collection, um, mainly horror I suppose, or there's a horror element in each tale, but it covers very diverse subject matter, following life, death, love, and also everything odd in between that. Obviously this novelist has a love for the bizarre. It's in the title. Like any short story collection, there are standouts. The first story in this book, Fish Night, about fish that swim in the air on some lonely stretch of highway. Part of the story was very joyous with kind of a very sour ending. Although I would say that each tale in this book has a very sour ending indeed. So if you're not into that, I wouldn't recommend it. Another favourite of mine in the book is called The Pit, where a man is snatched by a community out in the middle of a stick somewhere and forced to do battle to the death with another opponent. It was a very well written piece and I really enjoyed that. It's kind of tragically sweet and horrific at the same time. Um, yeah, I just couldn't get that story out of my head. But the story that really stayed with me in this novel, and not in a good way, had to be The Night We Missed the Horror Show. Obviously in the title it's about some kids who have missed the horror show, and it's set in a time of high racial prejudice, and it takes it pretty far. Um, although it does question our humanity and the fact that we just destroy everything, regardless of skin colour. So, uh, I don't know, it was a very hard story to read, and... Uh, I've actually read it twice now and I don't know if I would read it again but it is something that I remember from this collection vividly. And when I read the end I felt like putting this book down for good and not finishing it but uh, I didn't know which is typically me and I battled on for the end. Another story in the collection, Steel Valentines, seems like a familiar story but it's Joa Landale's spin on how far a man will go to survive. I think it's one of the short stories in the book. Um, I'd say it's short and sweet, but there's nothing sweet about this novel. What I will say, it's a short and bloody story, and uh, if you're a lover of horror, you will enjoy it. Now, I'm not going to go over every story in this collection. What I will say, though, is that the book was a pretty fine read, and it's probably something that I will uh, read again and again, as I love short horror fiction. I love short fiction, to be fair, because you can do so much with the format, and you're not going to be bogged down with too much exposition. Get in there and get out. <laughs> Personally, that's the first book I've actually read by the author, so I need to go seek out more by him. If you've read anything by him, let me know if it's any good and leave it in the comments below and I'll have to check it out. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this book review. Thanks for watching as usual and I hope to see you next time. Bye. I am not a crook. <laughs> Although I feel like one for re-uploading older videos. Hope you enjoyed.